What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Variant the Podcast. I'm kind of tired. I'm going to be honest. I am too. I don't. I don't know what it is. It's well. It's the freaking busyness. Yeah. So, so for everybody who's listening and watching, we are working like pretty much around the clock these days because of the holidays. The holidays are a very busy time for everyone. Yeah. It is very much so here at Triune Films, not just for Variant, but we have our Triune Digital Store, which is keeping us very active and busy around the holiday sales and so forth. But then, of course, Variant. We're all in our other show, Film Right. We're trying to get ahead for our holiday break because we shut everything down at the end of the year. Let everybody get time with their families uh, at the end of the year. It's just kind of a, a holiday tradition for yep. us here. So we are swamped. And then on top of that, we are leaving for Orlando mm-hmm. to go to Walt Disney World to check out Rise of the Resistance. So it is a very busy time. So Eris and I both, I think, are in the same slump. Yes. And as, of, as much as I love Christmas and everything, it's like I put up the Christmas lights outside this weekend. Did you do that this weekend? I did it this weekend, which I love it at all. But it's like when it's all said and done, you're like, ah tired because <laughs> like i'm the guy who tries to go like all out with it where i enter into like the community like competitions that's right for my house to like potentially win best lights so i'm always trying to put like new additions you were so upset the first time you did it dude because I, you, <laughs> you objectively you got I robbed should've... by an older one an old yeah from an older lady objectively i should have won <laughs> like i'm not trying to like you know throw any don't stones try and here. rob grandma of her it victory. Was, it was one of those things where she was an you know an older single lady, so it was more like Merry Christmas and not like that's un- understandable. It is y- the season yes. of perpetual hope. But if you're gonna hold a con- I yes, but if you're gonna hold a contest, <laughs> it should be on merit and merit alone. <laughs> <laughs> so to sum up, Eris wants his trophy, lady. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming after I'm coming this for year, it. 2019. <laughs> But yeah, uh, it does. It does. Vary. When you when you're decorating, I didn't do the outside lights yet. I always go waver back and forth on mm-hmm. whether or not my kids, of course, are always like, "Oh, can we do it at the end?" And then I'm like, "Yeah, or no, or yeah, or no." So sometimes they go up and sometimes they don't. Do you do the roof or anything? Do you go like, no, you know, get in, get no? It? I'm gonna. I'm. I feel like I'm getting close to that point where I'm gonna get real bougie and I'm gonna hire someone to do it, <laughs> oh, and I'm just gonna bring somebody out. Just like whatever, man. Just put them up, and make the kids smile. I don't, you know, whatever. Dude, that sounds expensive. It's like looked into five, it. It's it is a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, depending which is on how expensive. elaborate you go. Yeah. I know in our neighborhood, a couple of people they, they just do the roofs where they line it. They do the outlines. Yeah, you know, like all the sharp angles of it. And it's like. Three, four, five hundred bucks. Yeah, from three, five hundred. Which just is to like do the roof. this is like serious first world problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like part of the fun is like doing it with your family. No, it totally is. But I, you know, because we do, you know, we do the inside. Like it's yeah. you know tradition. Like you know the weekend after Christmas or the following week. Um, you know, we do the inside. So we did do all that. We did all the inside of our house and put the Christmas tree up and mm-hmm. all that stuff. And that's kind of like our big tradition. Fake. We put on Christmas music or like Home yes. Alone plays in the background, you know, and we Which is on Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to this, the Fox purchase. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we, you know, we do that and that's like our big tradition. So the outside always is secondary for me. And, uh, but either way it's exhausting. Yeah. Do you have a fake tree or do you do a real we tree? We did. We, we broke down and we got a fake tree a couple of years ago. Last year we broke down and bought a fake tree. D- did you? Yeah, last year was our first year we got a fake tree because we're just like it's like once you do it, yes. you're like, why didn't I do this right. so long ago? Because these new freaking trees, they're like they look better than the real ones. They really do. <laughs> they they look better, and they you people that come to our house, they have a hard time telling that it's not real. It was the allergy thing, which was big for us because uh, my wife and daughter have bad allergies, oh. and you just hear all the health things because it, it, you're having you're a dead tree it's in true. your living room for it's like true. a month. It gets mold, all the spores and yeah. all that crap, and then the water gets all murky. My Ugh. wife is like a big nature person she loves the outdoors <laughs> right. and plant i mean you know she's mm-hmm. really into all that stuff so she 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 loves it. it's all about the smell oh it just smells so piney they have spray for that they yeah that's right just get for breeze <laughs> just get one of the plugins <laughs> yeah but but now that we have it it's like this was so yeah, much no, easier ne- never go back and it's just you like, don't have to pry that seven foot tree yes. through your front door with eight hundred and fifty thousand pine needles that go everywhere. Oh my gosh! Or for me, we didn't have an SUV last year. We just got an SUV this recent year, so I had to tie it on like the roof of my sedan. That True. was fun. <laughs> yeah, I will say there is a you know there is of course the novelty and the nostalgia yes. of yeah. the family going to like a tree farm. Mm-hmm. You know, we found that one that one year where you actually got to cut it yep. down yourself. You mm-hmm. know, uh, and th- you know that is fun. That's very memorable. It's just the getting it in and out. And then, you know, like you said, you do have a real tree in your house. So if you have allergies or whatever, that's a problem. But it's just so much easier. It is. And you don't got to put lights on them. 
Well, mine, I didn't get oh, one. Oh, you with, didn't get yeah, the lit one? one because my wife is a Nazi with the lights. Oh. Like, it has to be a very certain way. And, like, she likes to be able to change, like, because I know there's the ones where you could go from white to, like, multicolored. That's and the it's one like, we have. But she is very, like, every little hole. Because if, even if we got one that was pre lit, she would still buy the strands. Still add lights. So it's to just it. like you buy the strands for, like, $250. All right. Well, that's like, right. We, I, I, I went super lazy. And I got the one that already has the lights that switch colors and everything. Is that annoying if a bulb breaks? Though, remember that was like a thing of one bulb breaks the whole strands out. I, it hasn't happened. We've had it for this is our third year, I think, using this tree. Like and LED it hasn't now, happened. Though, right? We're not like it, they are LED okay, lights. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's so not it's gonna last like forever. You gotta find like like in Christmas vacation. Yeah, you gotta no, find yeah, that one bulb. You gotta go through each strand. <laughs> you see, like you have one or two people that are purely dedicated <laughs> to fixing the lights, or just me. Like in my case, I was just me as sitting there with, like trying to untangle fifteen pieces of strands of lights. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited though. I'm excited yeah, for it's, Christmas. It's fun to be. It's um, you know, it's Christmas time, and that's always cool. And what's my uh, kids are like crazy excited. Yeah, yeah. I do, I do need a train for my tree though. I want to get the Polar Express train. I have one. You have the Polar I, Express. I didn't one? put it up this year because we have family coming into town mm -hmm. for the holidays. So we're gonna have like five extra people. So mm -hmm. the gifts are gonna like oh like overflow. Yeah, it's gonna be like more than usual. Is it the Polar Express train? Yeah. Oh, that's legit. It's the oh no 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 oh, the Lionel one. The line yeah the no one no from no the no. Movie. It, it's the it says Polar Express, but it's like the oh. it's like the cheap version. <laughs> it's like the knockoff. The Polar not five hundred dollar one. Yeah, it's like run by a, a drunk polar bear. That one or Hogwarts Hogwarts Express. That's the really one cool. that I wanted. That'd be really. Cool. I want the I want the the Hogwarts Express. <laughs> but the Polar Express one is cool too. Uh, but that's that's our uh, our little brief rant of yeah. our Christmas traditions. I guess I don't know, I don't know tradition. Hey, I don't it's, know. it's Christmas it's time. Season, We're past yeah. Thanksgiving. It's officially Christmas time. It's exciting. <laughs> Um, but we do have. I thought we. So the other day you were in your office, and I was like, Tim, I got a cool idea for some of us to talk about on, uh, on yeah. podcast. So it's comic kind of a book, fun thing. Yeah, comic book names. There's so many, so many. And as we've learned over the year, which we knew before, but like when you have a show on YouTube and you're constantly putting stuff up to you know thousands of people every mm -hmm. week, if you mispronounce something. They're gonna let you know oh, every time. <laughs> They're without gonna failure. let you know. Like, and it, we get <laughs> names wrong all all, all the, the time, days. as does anyone who tries to pronounce names in comics. Well, comics is like a special place because now we have a lot of cartoons and live action movies and stuff. But for the most part, and even just you know, there's way still way more comics than there is movies mm -hmm. and shows like that. So you don't necessarily know how this stuff is pronounced a lot of the time for the weird ones, right? Because you're not hearing it. It's not a movie. It's right. not a TV show. You know what I mean? Right. And now, more recent years, as you know, comics are getting more popular, we're starting to see it stuff more in Titans. We're like, oh, that's how they said that. Or, right. you know, in cartoons and stuff. But growing up and stuff, you kind of just had to guess. You're yeah, like, you totally. just had to be like, I think that's how you say that, even though it's like Arabic or whatnot. So you were reliant on either the publisher, the right. creator saying it somewhere in an interview, or hopefully it shows up on one of your favorite animated series. Exactly. But now we are helped quite a bit with the movies and the television. For sure. There's so much of it now. Mm. So we are helped quite a bit, but still. So I thought it was would be fun to compile a little list of names that are <laughs> commonly like people argue about. They're commonly missaid, I guess. Yeah. Or ones that are just controversial because there's some people who are like, no, it's this, not that. Yeah. So we're going to go and we're just going to start right here. So And this is just comics. This is just comics. Like yeah. you, if you get into like anime. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, this is purely just basically Marvel and DC. Yeah, okay. The big two. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. So first one, it's more of a, a new one, which is from Donny Cates. Mm -hmm. Null. No. But. So it is null. It is null. Right. We we know that for a fact. But a lot of people up front were arguing that it's cuddle. <laughs> <laughs> like that was that is was that, an actual argument. So do they also pronounce it cano? Yeah. <laughs> I cano you. I have no idea, but I remember when we did the uh, origin of uh, the symbiote god, which is null mm -hmm. episode. There was a lot of people like, yeah, it's not null. It's not null. And then yeah. you know they would spell it out as you know as you're supposed to pronounce it. Yeah. They're like cuh. No, and yeah. I'm like, no, that's not it. <laughs> a lot of the times the internet is at fault with a lot of this stuff too. Because yeah. we'll get corrected. Sometimes we are wrong. Right. But we'll get corrected sometimes and we're not wrong. And it's that there's so many different people that pronounce things so differently all over the place. For and sure. then it shows up on Reddit or whatever and mm -hmm. it gets into this like hive mind and everyone there's like groups that decide no, it's pronounced like this. For so sure. you kind you kind of have to go to the source and try and find, okay, who, who what did the creators say when they talk 100%. about it? 100%. He actually, Donny Cates, uh, got tweets and stuff about it. People, you know, asking him how to pronounce That's it. That's hilarious. And he's like, this is how you pronounce it. So, but that is a good plus now too, you know, within the last 10 years or so with social media becoming so popular, you can literally just message the creators 
and be like, hey, how do you say this? That's where, true. Where, you know, like yeah. in 1992, that wasn't a thing. And they answer, to, which is great. Con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really cool. So that one, this, the next one up is probably one of the most controversial ones still. And to me, it's very much like tomatoes, tomatoes type thing, which is Ra's al Ghul or Ra's al Ghul. Yeah. So we've actually said both on the show. I, I say it all the time. Yeah. I even say that I say both because I think it's very much tomatoes, tomatoes. I don't I think don't... either one is wrong. Didn't they say there's no wrong, like either one? Yeah, uh, I, in the Batman in Batman Beyond animated series, we actually used that clip uh, when Talia Al Ghul is talking to Terry. She says basically says something. It's Raish, not Raz. Common misconception, right? So it's Raish. So from that alone, you'd be like, it's Raish. But, you know, so many people call him Raz in uh, Batman Begins. He's called Raz al Ghul. That's what I was about to say. In, in Nolan's films, though, he was called Raz al Ghul. Yeah, and then I believe in the Arkham games, it's also Raish as well. So, so that's like... But it's again, it's like tomatoes, tomatoes. Yeah. So it's weird, like, you know, when you say that, and it, like, if I was to say Raz, people in the comments are going to be like, it's Raish. If I was to say Raish, people in the comments are going to be like, it's Raz or right. Raz. Right. There's like three different ways to say it, I guess. So for everyone <laughs> who's calling him Raz al Ghul, you're right. For everyone calling him Rachel Gould, you're right as well. Exactly. So congratulations, <laughs> we're all fine. But I thought it was funny that it was such a big deal in the comic book community that Paul Dini, you know, famed uh, comic book writer and cartoon writer, Batman animated series and all that uh, fun stuff, had to put it in an episode. Right. Basically making Tal uh, Talia Al Ghul herself tell Terry, Batman Beyond, this is how you say my father's name. <laughs> he, he felt the need to correct it for the record. <laughs> Uh, this one is really fun. Uh, next one, because this one actually kind of annoyed me a bit because I'm like, that, I feel like that one's so obvious. Uh, Dark Side, as we all know, it's Dark Side. This one surprised me. A lot of people, no, I don't want to say a lot. I There's mean, a good amount of people that say Dark Seed instead of Dark Side. Yeah, I've heard people pronounce it that way. And, and I didn't realize that as many people did as, as it's we weird, discovered. Right? I remember I would. Because it's such a prominent name. Right, because that one's in cartoons a lot. Yeah. He's, you know, he's a very, very popular villain. I was at a comic book shop uh, getting my pull list a few years ago, and I actually pre-ordered uh, a Dark Side action figure. Mm -hmm. And the the guy who worked at the comic book shop was like, "Oh, is this your Dark Seed?" I'm like, <laughs> "It took me off guard a little <laughs> bit because it was because <laughs> it was one of the what first." What you say about <laughs> my kid? <laughs> it was one of the first times I really heard you know heard someone say it like in person. And I was like, "Oh yeah, Dark Side," and he kind of looked at me like I was the wrong one. <laughs> And I didn't. I just. I didn't say anything. It's like whatever, bro. But it was funny that we were kind of like at a standstill. I was like, is it seed or side? And I'm like, go watch the Bruce Tim cartoons. It's definitely side. <laughs> you were questioning your own. <laughs> it's like uh, go have an argument with uh, Paul Dini and Bruce Tim and all the people. Uh, yeah, that one seems like an obvious one. Yeah, Constantine. I don't Th get this one either. That's another, but that's one Const that a lot of people like to do. Time because Const Const time. Well, the, the thing is, is that Constantine isn't limited to comic books no the name constant for sure like that this is a that's a that's a name that goes back to history for sure so i don't get the mispronunciation to, to, well to that point <laughs> we and that is the problem with names in comics is that you'll get words that are pronounced typically grammatically a mm. specific way but the comic creators will intentionally yes. pronounce it another way. They will have their own. It's kind of like how people do with kids' names now. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. where they'll take words and they'll put it together. Oh, no, it says it's pronounced like this, but it's spelt like that. And you're like, that does not. <laughs> that, that don't make no sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like a a, -Ron. <laughs> a Yes. <laughs> but yeah, so it's like, but they do that a lot in comics. And so I kind of get where people might want to mm -hmm. assume that a word is pronounced like some unique way. Right. You know, as opposed to the way it's actually written. But Constantine has been around so long. It's like know. dark side. It's like what? Yeah, I don't I, I don't know. I've always said uh Constantine or Tyne. Now now I'm confused myself. <laughs> <laughs> I've always said I don't know what I've always said. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens this when we get so deep it into happens. it. This is what goes on on Reddit. <laughs> Constantine, boom. <laughs> Constantine, yeah. Uh, this one makes total sense because yeah. this one is this not is a ominous. real word at all. This is actually, I think, is more controversial. I than still can't Razzle pronounce Gul it. Or Rachel Gul. Uh, <laughs> mix yes spitlick. Mix yes spitlick. Now, a lot of people who are listening are probably like, "That's not how you say it, though, Eris. That's not that's not the right pronunciation." Now, I go by Superman the Animated Series because, again, like mm -hmm. I grew up with all like Superman the Animated, basically right. the DC like universe. That's largely that's a massive part of what got me into actual comic books. Right. So, like, I, that's like my first love or entry into the comic book world. But in Superman the Animated Series, 
Um, I forget, J- is it Goffrey? What's that guy's name? The comedian, Jim Goffrey. You oh, know, the guy, uh, no. Um, oh, man, you just made me totally forget his name. Uh, Gilbert Godfrey. Gilbert. Yeah. Gilbert Goffrey. Uh, he voiced Mixia Spitlick in the, uh, the series. Right. And in the episode he was in, he basically is trying to, you know, he's playing that game with Superman and he tells Superman how to pronounce his name. And he literally shows like icon. He says mix. He shows a blender mm-hmm. mixing spit. He spits at Superman <laughs> and then a dog licking lick. So mix. Well, it's mix. Yes. Spit lick. And right. that's literally how. So I'm like, yeah, that's how you say yeah, it. We've actually showed that clip several yeah, times on the show. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, that's there it is. But a lot of people, I don't even know how other people pronounce it. But I'm like, that is good enough for me. If if they put yeah. it in that, you know, Superman the Animated Series, which is one of the most beloved DC cartoons of all time, that's how you say they it. They literally broke it down. Right, right. But it's also it is the most understandable one because if yes. you see how it's spelled, it's M X Y Z P T L K. Yeah, it's really weird. I mean, it's crazy. It's, but if you break it up that way, MX, Mix, YZ, Yes, and then PT, Pit, but and then But that's lick. not how you yeah, would pronounce it. No, like, that's not no, grammatical. That's like, not. that's like letter vomit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's like, come on, man. Now you're just messing with people. He's an imp. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> um, this one is another weird... Uh, or Orion, 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 but a lot of which again for me that's an easy right. one because it's a con- it's a it's a constellation for the love of God. Yes, some people say Orion though. Yeah, like an Oreo. Or yeah, that one. That those one, are like people that really more love like. Well, those people are just flat wrong. Yeah. But it is it is a thing. Again, it falls into the camp of like you know it's comics. It's a different character, so maybe you want to pronounce it a little different or whatever. But it is Orion. Yeah. So that one, that one's like whatever. We yeah. Whatever. And then um, Mjolnir, Thor's hammer. Mjolnir. That one is that one. A lot of people get wrong. But it, it's because of the spelling. One hundred percent. It's a Norse. It's Norse. You know, it's, yeah. Yeah. But I was just like mule, like a mule, like an animal, yeah. and then mule. near, like you're near me. Right. But you have to know how know how like their their grammatical phrasing one, works. One, it's definitely one you have to learn for yeah. sure. I remember it's got a J in it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what throws everybody off. <laughs> it's understandable. It's just definitely one that a lot of people either get wrong or they're like, no, you said you said that wrong. Yeah, when like you said, uh, when you go look at what Norse uh, mythology, like oh, yeah. how they actually, yeah. you know pronounce it in their alphabet and that you know again that's one of those for that's kind of an easy one Mm -hmm. because again that's something that not only is it in marvel comics but marvel comics took almost all of that mythology from norse mythology Mm -hmm. so it's like you can go back and find that a num from a number of different sources it's actually shocking when you get into like thor Mm -hmm. if you go and if you don't go don't don't put the comics down and you just go pick up like norse mythology right and culture and you just start reading it and their stories and their folklore and the stories they would tell their kids and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Marvel comics. It's Thor comics, like almost to a T. I mean, they took so they just so, bucked it. They, they literally took it. so much of it <laughs> and just took direct interpretations and then put them into the comic book. It makes sense. The Marvel comic. It's book like world. everyone, even DC has their own version of like Thor and her. Yeah, and yeah, all yeah. That stuff. So it's it's you know public domain. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it, but it's very cool to see how much they interpreted. Um, you know, because again, I. So, you know, there are people that obviously know Norse mythology, but mm-hmm. most people don't, I would say, a yeah. lot of people. Um, and so, but it's it's cool to see how much of that, you know, that historic folklore and that mythology just easily translated into what we, is our modern mythology, really, like mm-hmm. through comic books. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's super, super interesting. Yeah. Next one up, though. This one hits a little close to home because we just recently did an episode on it and Watchmen is currently a TV series on oh, HBO. Oh, so yes. Oh, yes. Ozzy Mandia, uh, Ozzy Mendeas. There we go. Ozzy Mendeas. But a lot of people say Ozzy Mandias. Ozzy Mendeas. Oz- Ozzy Mendeas. I don't even. I say Ozzy Mendeas. That's what I say. Ozzy Mendeas. Because it's spelled O Z Y M A. It's also the way they pronounce it in the show. Right. Ozzy Mendeas. Ozzy Mendeas. But as we know, this episode literally just went up like a month ago. We did an origin of Ozzy Mendeas, yeah. and other people like, no, 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 no. Yes. Why do you say it that way? I hate that you say it that way. Yeah. I'm like, that's how they say it. That's how, that's how they said it in the movie. That's how they say it in the show. That's how I'm going to say Man, it. Ozymandias, Ozymandias, Ozymandias. I mean, really, it falls into the kids. Like, who cares? Right? It is one of those things. Like, it's yeah, Ozymandias. Like, you know Ozymandias, what I'm saying. Ozymandias, 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 Ozymandias. I'm going to stay on the side of Ozymandias, though. Yeah, I would just keep pronouncing it the way that they say it in the movies and television. Right. Show. And it, and also, that's the way it's pronounced yeah. for the actual character and history and mythology. All right. Ozymandias. Well, we, we got one more. We got one more. Last one. Dakin. Dakin, some people say Dakin, which is Wolverine's son. Which is understandable because it's double K. Yeah. So it's D A uh is it double K? D A I thought it was, isn't it? 
Is it, or, am, or am I? Am I, I think it's. Wrong? Let's see. Let's. We could. Is it? It's one K. D A K. Oh, okay. Am I? Oh, I'm, you know what? I think I'm. I'm having. I'm thinking about uh, what is the uh, Street Fighter character? Oh, now you made me. I know what you're talking about. I think that's the one I'm thinking about. It has double K. Okay. I'm, I had like a. I had like a. Brain Wait, like fart. Tekken? Tekken. Yeah, that, uh, okay, the fight. No, is it Tekken? No? Well, it's a fighting game. But it's not. That's Street not Fighter. Street Fighter. No, but it's a fighting it's game. Not, I don't know, man. <laughs> anyway, before Dakin, I stick my foot in my are, mouth, I'm gonna move on. <laughs> D A K E N. Are you Dakin or Dakin? D A K E N. Yeah, Dakin or Dakin. I would say Dakin. I think I'll say Dakin too. Yeah. Or, but uh, you could understand day though too, because the E makes the A day. Right? You could do that? Well, n no. You don't think so? You can't be dacking. So you don't think like, but like from a grammar standpoint, you don't think that you could be like, I could see why people say day. Yeah, like okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Dakin. I, that one I actually don't really have a side on. I'm like, I don't know. That Dakin, one to me is tomatoes, tomatoes. I don't think I've ever heard it said yeah. in a cartoon it or anything go, either. Yeah, Dakin. Actually, he was, I think, in a, in a Spider-Man cartoon. <laughs> I love how you're just... Well, actually, no, it would be Dakin. So a D-A-K-E-N. Yeah, Dakin. Yeah, so like Taken or Makin. Yeah, that's why. That's what I was thinking. Like, because you're literally swapping Kinda out like the Kind of like Bacon, D but different. It probably is Dakin then. Like, that is a good way to... <laughs> that's why I was saying, like, the E makes the A day, because you have, like, Taken... You're literally just swapping yeah, the so T for Dakin. a D, so it's Dakin. Dakin. This is riveting, by yeah, the way. Yeah, we, we solved this it. This is riveting <laughs> entertainment right here. Is it Dakin or Dakin? <laughs> well, no, because Taken or Macon. I don't know. I'm just like that. That's okay, I'm going to land on Dakin. Dakin. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna stay with that, too, because my original argument. No, because double Ks would make it Dakin. Yes. But again, the E would make the A, Day. Correct. Just like so Dakin. Dakin. But Dakin. Yes. We've solved it. There we go. <laughs> We've broken the and riddle. And that is the end of our list. <laughs> there is a there is a much longer to be for fair, sure. To be to be uh fully transparent, we didn't make a long one. No. It's not a long list. No. It was enough to it was enough to get some <laughs> to get, juices flowing. And to get an idea of what we're talking about. There's right. just a lot of names because there are some crazy, crazy names in comics. For sure. I just some of which we couldn't include on the list because we still don't know how to pronounce them. No, and it's just kind of interesting to it's like one of those things. You know what we should do? We should actually create like a comic book word of the day. Or something like that, where we can actually find a comic book word that's commonly mispronounced, find the actual pronunciation of the word, <laughs> and then give that. That'd be really funny. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So we can actually say, this is definitively how this word is pronounced for those of you listening. We, we could do that. We could do something like that, like on a regular, maybe not weekly, but from shoot, time we, to time, throw shoot, it in. We can make that like a, like a calendar that we throw up on the store. No joke. <laughs> <laughs> Forget normal words of the day. This is your comic book word of comic the day. Comic book word of the day. <laughs> 360, 365 words. Think we can do it? God, I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> be a lot of words. That's a lot. That's too much. <laughs> um, but we got some really cool news this weekend that I was really excited about. Actually, it was, it was before this weekend. Um, and when you're listening to this, it's actually going to be like a week and a half old. But Black Adam, the movie, as we all know, that's going to be mm -hmm. a movie. Uh, with The Rock, starring The Rock. The Rock confirmed that the JSA is going to be in that movie. Yeah. How crazy is that? That's pretty insane. And I unexpected. I know. Very I'm unexpected. I'm so excited. Apparently, we're going to get Dr. Fate right. in there, um, Stargirl, possibly some Jay Garrick. Or uh, How do you feel about that? About what? This about them introducing these characters in the Black Adam movie. I'm, actually, I'm excited. I mean... I mean, mean, I'm excited to get the characters. Right. You mean like just like the JSA could totally have their own movie is like what you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know. I'm curious to see how they're going to tie it in because like DC seems like they're doing everything backwards where like. That's you, my problem. Yeah. Man. Like I'm kind of used to it, I guess, by now where like instead of giving these characters their own movies and establishing them first, they give you like a bit and then spin out mm -hmm. and give them their own movie. So initially, I was just like, oh, I want to see some Dr. Fate. Yeah. I want to see like Star sure. Girl, like Jay Garrick, you know, Alan Scott, all that stuff. So, or Wildcat would be really dope too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I don't know. I'm just, the fanboy in me is really excited because I want to see these characters on the big screen. But the fanboy in me was really excited for Justice League. Right. So I don't know. Man, you, why you got to bring me down, Tim? <laughs> so <laughs> I just try to rope it back to reality because here's my problem with it. My problem is I feel like that's a step backwards to what we just came from mm -hmm. with what they did, tried to do with the Justice League and all of that, which was try to do too much too fast. Right. And But also, it's like we've never seen these characters in – we've seen them live action, some of them, mm -hmm. but not together – no. As the JSA for sure, mm -hmm. um, but also not in the on the big screen. We, right. This is their first, and and for them to just kind of appear in the Black Adam movie, it's like okay, well, in what capacity? 
How long are we going to be seeing them? Uh, are they going to play a major role in the story? Why the Black Adam outside of, is this like because it's The Rock and he wants this big spectacle epic mm-hmm. and so they're going really big with it? To bring more attention to it? To, right. I guess in a broadly, more in a broad, more broad sense, is it just because of that and the rest of the kind of overall DCEU be damned? You know what I mean? Or mm-hmm. is this the smartest way forward for the overall you know, story universe, because right. this is going to be in continuity with other films. This isn't going to be like the Joker where it's a spinoff. Mm-hmm. This is in continuity with the Shazam film. And there it's eventually going to come into, you know, the mix with Wonder Woman and all mm-hmm. Aquaman and all everything else. Cause they're going to continue to live on. I'm curious to see, did they confirm like, cause they're very hush hush as of late with old DCEU. Very like, much I so, haven't yeah. heard like even with like Wonder Woman and stuff like that. Like that's getting pushed back. That's been delayed. We know that obviously she's going to be in it because she, you know she's already been in like what two other films, three other yeah. films. But they're not put. That was a big push for them. They're not pushing the synergy anymore. Like right. they're, it's, they're just like even in Shazam. Like we knew. Like there was little hints here and there, but like you didn't even see Superman's face at the end. He was in it, yeah, but like it, yeah. they were very unsure about what's gonna happen with Cavill and stuff like that. So they're like, "Well, we know we're always gonna have a Superman, so we'll just cut off his head right. and you see him from like shoulders down." So I, you know, I'm very, very curious, but like I think maybe a significant role because rumor also has it that Michael Fassbender is being eyed for Doctor Fate, which is insane because he was Magneto. Yeah, but that's Marvel. They do they cross But I'm over. saying it's the same type of character with the mask. Oh, and the, I see. You what know what saying. I'm saying? Not I don't look. I, I think he would be a fantastic Michael Fassbender. Yeah, he would be a fantastic. So I would not Dr. be. Fate. But I'm kind of like, dude, that's the, basically the same character you just play. Okay, not power wise. No, not no. power wise. But more, he looks. He like has DC, a similar look. It's like DC's Doctor Strange, though. He'd be more of like a mystic, mystical yeah, dude, mystical fine. arts. Which would be really dope. Plus, Michael Fassbender, like you said, is good in anything. I'm just, I don't know. I guess I'm just. <laughs> and we wouldn't see his I'm going to be negative now because yeah. <laughs> I'm just kind of rubbed wrong with this, the 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 idea of now we're just going to throw the entire JSA into a Black Adam movie. And, it's, and Black Adam is the main character. Right. I don't know. I mean, it seems like we're going to get several, but maybe not all, maybe like two or three. Maybe like we'll get Stargirl, Dr. Fate, and let's say like, I don't know, uh, Wildcat. Like, you, I know, you know what I mean? I don't know. But I'm more, I'm a little more optimistic just because I'm, you know, I'm trying to be, but also the, the recent movies have been good. You got the Joker, Shazam, Aquaman, yeah. Wonder Woman, Matt Reeves, Batman's in the works. So all those were, prom- were good. And, you know, the ones that are still in production are, are sure. very promising. So I'm like... You know, hopefully they, they, they yeah, got it going. I guess my, you know, again, I guess my negativity is just coming from a place of I really just want to see them take their time and tell these very rich stories mm-hmm. in a methodical way. Yeah. Like, I want to see a Dr. Fate movie where they tell us the origin story on the big screen. We get just, we get to focus on that character because he has such a deep, rich mm-hmm. origin story. And it's so it's like freaking Indiana Jones oh, this would be so cool. meets, you know, uh Doctor Strange. It's so cool. awesome. Yeah. And I would just hate to see that robbed. You know, and you could go on with the other characters. Same thing. Jay Garrick. No, for sure. Anyone who's seen uh Young Justice, Doctor Fate, you know, was a pretty prevalent character throughout the series. Right. And that would be awesome. Yeah. To like to see, you know, solo Doctor Fate movie. I do agree. I wish in a perfect world that they would go the Marvel route where they gave all the characters they wanted to use their solo movies and then, you know, go together for a Just League movie, a Just yeah. League Dark movie, a JSA movie. Yeah. But, you know, it, they're, we're so far in. They're still like, we're going to wait 10 years to, you know, another 10 years to get our end game. You know what I mean? Like I that's, guess. It's <laughs> I mean, there's still time to do it, you know, because with Marvel moving into this next phase and there's a lot of uncertainty around what, I don't know why that sounds even more negative. There's some uh, uncertainty around what Marvel is doing next. Is it going to be as good as the first 10 years? Mm -hmm. You know, that's to be seen. Um, are the, is the audience going to take to it the same way they did, you know, the first, the, the infinity saga? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we don't know. We'll have to wait and see. They, they've been f- fantastic in almost everything that they've done. Right. Um, and very smart. Um, but you know, I would just like to see DC take their time. And now with the new streaming, streaming platforms they have coming out with HBO max and what have you, you know, they have the ability to do kind of like what Marvel's doing with Disney plus mm-hmm. to have, you know, do a uh, theatrical quality uh, se- series, like mini, like mini series. Yeah. Like maybe an eight, nine, ten 
uh, episode series mm -hmm. for like a Doctor Fate or break out the D sure. JSA, do origin stories, and then integrate them and use the same actors, mm -hmm. same characters, and integrate them into the broader DCEU on the big screen. They have the capability of doing that. So, I, you know, DC, I give you the benefit of the doubt, but I would well, really like to see them, you know, be more elaborate. Well, to be to be fair, too, I guess I should have uh, read the quote from uh, The Rock um, earlier because he did say this is him quote. When he was asked about the JSA, quote, JSA, we will introduce that, the world of the JSA. So a lot of it is people kind of running with it, although there is rumors of Michael Fassbender and Dr. Dr. Uh, Fate. But from judging purely on that one sentence, that doesn't necessarily mean. And we're going to see that. All, right. It just means, you know, we might get a little Easter egg to set up like for a JSA movie, okay. like you said. So, you know. They might just introduce the idea that the JSA right, exists. Right. Or like just give us Dr. Fate and then that branches out to everyone else. Which is something. interesting. Because that means we're going back in time. Yes, for sure. Yes. So very, very cool. That kind of excites me more. Actually, do you think the black uh, black Adam movie now is going to be? That's why he's getting a solo movie. It's going to be more of a prequel. Well, that's what so they like, said. So like, did they? Did yeah, I totally miss that? That's what he he. Well, he didn't say it was a prequel. Okay. He said that the story is too big to be told in one film. Okay. So clearly. You know, and we talked about this before, where you know it's clear that The Rock wanted a movie that was focused on his character. Yes, because which Rock, yeah. I again I am totally good with. That's what I'm saying. I want to see that. Mm -hmm. If they're going to tell a story about Black Adam that just gives his origin from like years prior, you know, we're back in time and it shows all the way leading up to what the events of Shazam. So we're, his movie is in the past and it leads up to his captivity. And then the end is the begin, you know, the events of Shazam. Mm -hmm. That is very cool. My issue with The Rock playing Black Adam is what we talked about before, which is I just I want to make sure that The Rock is able to pull off Black Adam. I say I want to make sure yeah. as if I have anything to do with it. <laughs> You're a Warner but, Brothers exec. <laughs> yeah, I would like. I, I'm just worried that The Rock is going to just be The Rock, and it's just going to be the story is going to be told in a way that's just meant to emphasize him in a specific way. Because Black Adam is a villain. He is a villain. Yes, he has done anti-hero things, but he's largely a villain. Mm -hmm. And I want to see him be a villain. And The Rock is like, well, he's a hero, but just one that does doesn't do things the way that. You know, you would like he, all the time. Right, yeah. And it, so I don't want The Rock to... Well, he's very much like... Rock it up and change it. He's probably like, well, this is going to be a franchise. This, he's not going to be a one-and-done villain like in the Marvel most of the I Marvel hope villains. not. He's an amazing villain. Right. He shouldn't be. He's So maybe that's, you, you know, he's establishing like he wants to be like the Loki of the DCEU. You know, a villain yeah. that's going to be there for like the long haul. And if it may, if they make it to where he's like a Thanos, to where he thinks he's a good guy, the dark side needs to be the Thanos. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen with yeah. that, but I'm. But my point is, is if they go that route mm -hmm. where he's like a Thanos, mm -hmm. where he thinks he's the good guy, right? He well, thinks he's doing things for the greater well, good. Well, I would imagine that's completely what it is, because that's kind of like what his story is in the comic it, books. Exactly right. With his so if they that. go that route, and yeah. that's what he means by that. Mm -hmm. That he's a hero, but one that doesn't play by the books, and he's just kind of spinning it. You know what I mean? Uh, and they do go the comic book route where he he's a villain, mm -hmm. but he thinks he's a good guy. Yeah. He thinks he's doing what he has to do. Yeah. Then that would be good. I think that that's dope, and that's that would be everything we want. Yeah, but I mean, I'm more, I don't know. I'm more of the, I'm just kind of curious to see what happens with it you know yeah i don't know there's I, a lot to be seen there's a lot to be seen and I, i'm more curious too just with this one statement the whole jsa thing like i want to know what that means like i kind of hope it is just a little tease like yeah. maybe we just like dr fate is just in it or because it is you know if it is based in the past that's why it's a thing so i'm very curious to see how they they play with that or if they introduce like a multiverse right that would be imagine that would be crazy because then i'll explain a lot of things like where the joker lives yeah and all that stuff you know i'm very big on the dc doing the multiverse stuff and it also like it's it, they have to you have to imagine that they're going to have to address what what happened when bvs mm -hmm. justice league at some point if they're going to continue with wonder woman and aquaman mm -hmm. uh in the with the flash in any capacity with uh miller right so it's it's kind of like you know, there's just a lot left, a lot to be seen, a lot we don't know about what, what Warner is going to do with the DC films, with the storylines, 
are they going to brand? You know, now we've got this Joker movie that just did gangbusters and it was total Elseworld Dude, stuff. Billion dollars. Crazy. Yeah. And so it's, you know, there's a there's a lot that we have to learn. But it certain his comments were definitely, definitely very interesting. I just again, I just would like to see them roll it out. Like I think most fans, I think most fans would like to see this. Uh, it, which is just have them roll it out in a way that's fair to each individual character. We get to see some elaboration on each individual character, and it's kind of a long form story, not trying to rush to get to something. You know what I mean? Well, in time we'll see. Like I mean, again, uh, going back to what I was saying earlier, I'm just more optimistic because I have been liking DC's more recent stuff. That's true. Yeah. So and Suicide Squad, that's another one. That well, Suicide Squad and uh, the new Harley Quinn movie. Yeah. The, so those are actually all. The, I don't know how I feel about the Harley Quinn movie, though. That's a, I don't want to get into that. I'm that's not going to get into that. Yeah, we'll yeah. Talk about, that's, that's another 20-minute <laughs> rant. We'll talk about that another time when we get a new trailer. Uh, uh, but staying in the DC universe, uh, Michael B. Jordan apparently met with Warner Brothers mm -hmm. about him playing Superman in his own solo Superman movie, yeah. which is extremely interesting. I love Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, me too. And I, I like these Elseworld things that DC's... this Because this I feel like this could be another Elseworld type thing. Yeah. like Much like the Joker mm -hmm. movie, where that was like, oh, that's not in continuity. Right. Because hopefully Cavill's still the, the DCEU Superman, because I love me some Cavill. He clearly has been making yeah. a statements recently that he still wants to play Superman. Uh -huh. So I would imagine this, you know, Michael Jordan's like, hey... I like this. I like the character. There's a black Superman in the comics. Let's do it. You know, it'll make money. <laughs> like, <right? laughs> like, I'm Michael B. Freaking Jordan. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, you know, and I said this to you when we found out a while back It's my, I, I love Michael B. Jordan mm -hmm. and almost any kind of Superman story. I'm, I'm a hundred percent down for uh, the, my only thing about it would be, I, I would like to see them give Superman a really good film with Cavill. Yeah, I agree. Well, Prior agree. to doing that, you know, uh, before we get into Elseworlds Superman, let's give, let's give Cavill a really, because, you know, Man of Steel was good, but it was very much inside the Snyder, you know, universe. Mm -hmm. Um, and then BVS was, you know, for me was hit or miss. Um, it had its moments, but overall, you know, I, it was a miss for me. And then same thing with Justice League. That was just a Frankenstein, <laughs> you know, that uh, never really got to see its what it, it was intended to be. So we really don't even know, you know. But regardless, you know, that storyline is is over, and it kind of it didn't it didn't have a clear direction and yep. to certain some extent. So I would like to see Cavill have the opportunity to tell a a purely Superman story. Um, that's that's really well done prior to that. But either way, I'm I'm down to see that for sure. Yeah, my I feel like he's such a good casting for Superman, and it kind of sucks that he has. I he just needs a good script. Yeah, I think you, like again, Man of Steel is good. Uh, I like Man of Steel, even though some of this, much like in BVS, some of the stuff that uh, Batman did in BVS. I guess you could say the same for Superman. Some of the stuff that Superman did in Man of Steel was questionable. As far as yeah. like, if you're a purist Superman fan or you're a purist Batman fan, you're like, yeah. well, the Superman I know wouldn't do that. Or right. Batman I know wouldn't do that, but whatever. Um, but overall, again, I, I think if he had a, you know, a good story, a good script, a good director that get, cause I just want that Superman movie that like, it's just, I said it before a long time ago. I think Wonder Woman with uh, the Wonder Woman movie captured the tone the wonder woman movie should have been the tone that superman had man of yeah. steel that pure like i'm a hero because i'm a hero like it doesn't like i nothing else matters right you save people first right you know you know it's like what do you mean we're not gonna we have to save them we have to, we have to at least right. try like a true hero a beacon someone that everyone would want to aspire to right. a beacon of a beacon of light you know hope basically like a god among men and we haven't really gotten that and it felt they tried to do it in justice league like, it, but it felt so forced where all of a sudden Batman's like, oh, yeah, he was like a beacon of hope and light. And then, you know, even Superman, when he came to fight Steppenwolf is like, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of justice. And they try to give us those little things like, throw, but it felt like you're just throwing a Band-Aid on stuff. And it was very like after the fact where that needs to be the core from the beginning, from the jump. Like even the whole uh, Superman's, uh, who played us? Superman's father in Man of Steel again? Oh, uh, Kevin Costner. No, his. Uh, oh, his, a Man of Steel. Man of Steel. Well. His uh his Kryptonian father, Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. There we go. Russell Crowe. I'm getting all kinds of wires crossed. I got Superman all over the place <laughs> in my head. The multiverse, man. Uh, but no, he's even given his son his speech when he's you know he finds his yeah. suit and he's first time he's learning how to fly and all that stuff. I'm like, yes, that. But like, follow it for like all of it. Yeah. <laughs> Not just that awesome. Yeah, like five a five minute fight scene. Like a what happened to the man of tomorrow? Yes. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, something with that really taps into the core of Superman, mm-hmm. right? Because like it or like it or don't, you know, Zack Snyder's uh, storytelling. His the, the he very much took the characters and he had them behave in an Elseworld type way, mm-hmm. right? They were more violent than they typically are supposed to be in the comics as far as their traditional roots. Batman, for instance, killed freely and openly. Mm-hmm. And Zack Snyder has said, you know, hey, get with it. it you know, this is the real world. People. He's like these characters really exist. They, they would really do this. yeah. This yeah. is how they would, and that's fine. But in the comics, they don't. But it's also like these characters don't exist and they'll never exist. So it's like, what are you talking about, bro? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these comics don't exist. They are fictional characters and in the comics they're where you know where they're derived from they don't behave like this and Mm. there are moral principles that they abide by for a reason there's a message there that's the whole point of the characters and so when you strip that away you're stripping away the core of those characters and again that's fine you want to tell an elseworld story with these characters we're all for it Mm -hmm. but i think and this is i think what the heart of what you're saying is is tell a story that has the heart and the core of Superman, Batman, present. Mm-hmm. Which I'm hoping we're going to get from the Batman with Matt Reeves. Oh, yeah. We're going to get yes. the heart and the, the core of who Batman is and how he became, you know, the Dark Knight and all that kind of thing. I thought Nat, Matt Nolan uh, or Christopher Nolan uh, did a really good job with that aspect of it, too, mm-hmm. of really showing Batman as, you know, the the hero that, you know, that you need, not the one you want. Yeah. You know, that sort of a thing. Um I would just like to see that done with Superman and give us get, give Henry Cavill a chance to tell a story that really speaks to who Superman is and like you said follow his history, you know, his roots to Krypton and uh you know his Well, I feel like for the cuz I know an artist said who worked for for DC Comics. He says when you go to DC, they and you're working on let's say Superman Batman, any of the big the big 7, right? So the, the just the characters, right? Uh, like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, so on and so forth. Uh, they basically have a Bible. They give you, so let's say tomorrow I was hired to write Batman, right? Um, DC would be like, okay, well, here's like basically a, gu- a, a guideline, a, a book of like rules, what you can and cannot do. Like these are the core foundations of the character. If you have any ideas or right. things outside of this, we need to discuss and see how that fits to the better, bigger picture. But there's certain like things like no. You, this is this character. You cannot do that. And I and I like the accountability there. Like I feel like yes, because these are fake characters. They're not real. Like I get it. You can do whatever you want with them because they're not real and be, you know whatever. But at the same time, people like these characters so Absolutely, much because they man. have been away so, this way so long and stuff like that. And they are you know as as dumb as it may sound, these characters are real to a lot of people in a in a sense. You know what I mean? Right. Because the foundations and principles that you know they learn or follow them. They actually a lot of people use in their own life. You sure. know what I mean? So I feel like if they had that accountability with the movies and TV shows, like like they do for the comics, that would be really cool. Yes. Or or needed, I think. Or it's like yes, but if you're because when you're giving someone Superman to Batman, that's like a privilege. Mm-hmm. That's not like you're you know you're not a creator, and that's like oh I'm getting to write this character. Right. That's like you know uh, a pop culture icon, and there's responsibilities with that. Yeah. So I feel like you sh- there should be an accountability there. Like apparently they do DC does whenever you're you know jump on a comic. Obviously now to that point they have some crazy stories and change stuff, but you know that stuff in their writer summits they talk about and it always reverts back anyway. But point I'm trying to make is if they had that for the TV shows and movies, I think that would be something that could kind of help where you're just not letting these directors or whatever do whatever the heck they want. Sure. It's like unless it's an Elseworld and stuff like sure. that. But for the DCEU, which is basically the in continuity version of the movie verse. I think uh, like some kind of accountability there would be helpful. I agree. I agree 100%. And and it it just speaks to, you know, what is literature, right? right? Whether it's comics, classic literature, you, novels, you name it, right? It speaks to why do people get attached to characters? It's because there is narrative there that contains morals, mm-hmm. that contains lessons, things that we derive from these characters' experiences. And so we then apply and turn around and you know we project our own lives onto these characters, and they that in doing so they become meaningful to us. Mm-hmm. So when you strip, like I think that's part of the problem that we're we're seeing with a lot of the Star Wars, uh, you know, right. people you know having a lot of backlash about the Star Wars uh, recent Star Wars trilogy, is because we followed these characters go through a very specific arc, right, Luke. Han, Leia specifically, mm-hmm. um, and you know they they go through this kind of you know the hero's journey, if you will, 
And then the the new trilogy kind of undoes some of that. And those characters, like many other characters, like a Batman, like a Superman, they are meaningful to people because of certain things. With Batman, it's because of what he's willing to do as a human. He has no superpowers. Mm -hmm. What he's willing to go through and what he's willing to forego. He could take the easy way out mm -hmm. and just kill the bad guy. Right. He can do that. He's both strong enough, smart enough. He has the tech, whatever. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't because he says, that's where I draw the line because human life is valuable no matter who is it is. And if I cross that line, I will become a monster. Right. Right? There's something to draw from that. There's a lesson to draw from that. And that it gives us, whether we realize it in the moment while we're reading it or not, it gives us a hope that maybe we could be like that too. 100%, yeah. And, and so same thing with Superman, Batman. So yeah, I agree with you. I think that it would be great if there was come someone like a Kevin Feige who did say, okay, here's the guidelines and there was some direct accountability that's, Yeah, that's a big it. problem with the movie. I guess the DCU in general, there isn't that one guy who's like, this is the vision. Usually like for any good storytelling, you need someone like steering the ship. Yeah. Like this is the end goal. And we're not talking about Elseworld stuff. No, 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 no. Just the DCEU. Yeah, like, in the, the main yeah. continuity. I don't know. I'm curious to see. Again, they've been doing better. The last several movies. For sure. So. We'll definitely give everybody the benefit of the doubt. There's a lot of people working very hard on it. And but the Michael B. Jordan thing, going back to that, which spawned all this this big rant, <laughs> um, I think it's going to happen, actually. I, I, I feel too. like that's not like if that rumor is true, which I mean, there's a lot of big sites reporting on it. So it most likely is that he had a meeting with them. Um, that's only a matter. It's not like if it's going to happen, it's when is it going to happen? I would agree. And I that'll be fun. I, you know, I love, I say it all the time, I love Elseworld Story. So I would be really down to see it. But. Not to keep re reiterating, I do, like you said earlier, would rather Henry Cavill get, you know, some, get a good story first. Yeah. Like a Man of Steel 2. I want a Man of Steel 2 and before I'd want that. I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of wanted Michael B. Jordan. If it wasn't going to be Idris Elba, I kind of wanted Michael B. Jordan to play John Stewart. Uh, John Stewart. That would have been so solid. So that would be kind of like a, dang it, you know, a little <laughs> bit of a bummer. <laughs> right, right. But, you know, again, I'm down. It's just we're in agreement. Uh, we hope Cavill gets another swing at it. You know, you know, before they go elseworld or in another direction. But staying in movie news, um, Black Panther, Black Panther Two. It's speaking of Michael B. Jordan, yeah, speaking of Michael B. Jordan, uh, it's obviously going to happen. It made all the money in the oh, world. Yeah. And rumor has it that Doctor Doom is going to be the villain for Black Panther Two, which is crazy. It is pretty crazy, isn't it? I'm very. I know it's a rumor. We yes. don't have any confirmations of anything, but if true, uh, you know, I'm kind of like. I'm, I already told you I'm back and forth on it. I'm just like, it's very interesting place to introduce Doctor Doom. Mm -hmm. But I guess in the Marvel Universe, any any yeah, movie is as good as any other. I thought it, I was kind of like, it'd be, it would have been cool to introduce in something maybe like the next Captain Marvel. I'm, yeah, I'm just curious to see how they're going to do it. I would imagine he would already have to be established. I mean, I mean, I don't know. They, it's MCU. They could do whatever they want. They could, yeah. They could even tie him to like, you know, Wakanda and everything, like 100% if they wanted to. So, I don't know. For I again, I, kind of like the DC thing earlier. I'm just excited to see Doctor Doom because I know if we're getting Doctor Doom, that just means Fantastic, Fantastic Four, Four is really close behind. Um, but yeah, I would rather see him in a Fantastic Four movie. I'm just kind of excited that we're get. I'm more so just excited that we're getting Doctor. Doom. Doom, because I know that means that Fantastic Four is you know, behind. Which so, was a given. Right. Fantastic so. Four. We knew we were getting Fantastic Four. But they Four. haven't said anything. We're like, when, when, when? Yeah. It's like, we know it's coming, but this could be the first sign of like, like if this becomes official, they're like, oh, Fantastic Four is only like two years behind. But for me, that also means that Doctor Doom is, is likely the, the big villain for the next phase. That could that because could be you're that not introduced. Listen, heads will roll in the <laughs> fandom if they introduce Doctor Doom and they do the typical one and done. There's I, no way, I, obviously, because he has to roll into a fantastic. So that means that he's got to be an overarching villain for sure. Kind of, but I feel like it would be more of an overarching villain like Loki, though. In that sense, I feel like he's more oh, Loki. That, that'd be crazy to me. I would rather Galactus be like the big like cosmic villain and then have like but Doctor Doom more on like he crosses over, but like Galactus versus Doom, like obviously who's gonna win? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> Yeah. I but I don't know that we need something as big as Galactus. So would you not want to like another Thanos level type like Because well threat? the th difference between Thanos and Galactus, Galactus feels like how do you beat that? He's a conqueror of world, right, devourer exactly. of worlds. That's awesome. I feel like I feel like Galactus would be awesome, but I also worry like that might be too big. 
I know that they're going cosmic and they're going into but space that's and all that, that kind of stuff. Ties, but Doctor Doom, that all actually ties together, though. So I wonder. It does. Because you got Doctor Doom, obviously, and then Fantastic Four, but that also means Galactic, Galactus and Silver Surfer. Yes. That's like all in the same world. Which it's all coming. You know right, it's all coming. Yeah. They, they, got, they acquired these characters. They wanted them desperately. We're going to get them. But I guess I'm I'm just wondering, like, because again, I go back to Doctor Doom. You know how powerful Doctor Doom is in comics. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah he yeah. is a monster mm -hmm. of a villain. He's like borderline Thanos, just without the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, right. And, and to to give to do him justice and to give him his day, like he he could go up against most of these characters by himself. He he, he very well could. I mean, he's one of the most powerful characters in the Marvel universe. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously you get into the gods and things like that. To different, but as far as villains go, he's certainly one of the most powerful. Villains. So you just you would just want to see him. I would just you love just like to the see them so much. You want to see like, him tear, let him at least for a few movies, just really let him turn loose. So where would, they have to get like a team together to battle him. I was going to say that's kind of what I was going to say. I would like for them to obviously be in conflict with him for like, a, you know, two movies, a few movies. Right. For a right. while. Fight him. See some cool stuff with. You know, Doctor Doom fighting some superheroes, but ultimately Galactus arrives and he has to team up with Fantastic Four and all the other heroes to fight Galactus because yeah. you know that's like a force of nature, yeah, type thing. And then obviously Silver Surfer and all that stuff. So I think that could be cool. That would almost be like Secret Wars esque. I think that'd be dope. Yeah, well, I mean, the Secret Wars is what they've been hinting at, you know. And it's so it's like you're you've, you're already hinting heavily at Secret Wars, mm -hmm. you know, and now you're introducing if the rumor's true. You're gonna you introduce somebody as powerful and big as a Doctor Doom, so now you add, are you know maybe you go they go the route where like it's like two phases long, this time right you know where it's like uh, the next big one is like a Galactus and we get the Herald you know Silver There's Surfle just so many cool like Fantastic Four villains though phase what were they phase five something like <laughs> phase four <laughs> well phase four is this, this one. one it is but yeah. they go they go through a new one with Doctor Doom. But and it's such a missed five. opportunity to not have Fantastic Four in Phase Four. Like the marketing alone would have been it's true, brilliant. But there's just so many cool Fantastic Four villains. Obviously, Doctor Doom, Kang the Conqueror would be Kang another. The Conqueror dope. is a really that's good another one. one that would. Forget. That was rumored actually. That would be there a was, solid one. They weren't. I don't think there were solid rumors, but there was rumors that Kang because all time travel thing though too. Like there's so much you could do. With and they've already broken. They've already broken uh, the the you know they've already cut the ribbon on the time travel thing. Exactly. Maybe maybe that is like something they're going to be doing. That's I don't know, be. man. That's what we were talking about last time. Is there's just so many directions they could go at this point. They've just they've set up so many different possibilities. Doctor Doom, King the Conqueror, Fantastic Four, Galactus, and Silver Surfer. That is like a whole. That is so much content right there. That's if you were insane. to do that right, like and not just cram it all into two yeah. movies or tr even a trilogy. Yeah. Like, and they are talking about Kevin Feige confirmed they're going to continue at a pace at like two, two to three, two minimum. Was it two minimum? A year, a year, mm -hmm. but they're saying three movies a year is the anticipation, and they're going to continue at that clip, uh, and that's not even in touching on or including the Marvel series on Mar on Disney Plus. That's another thing I was going to say. A lot of these characters, you could probably just you know we're getting a Moon Knight series because that's another thing. He's probably mm -hmm. going to cross over. Ah, there's just so much. The Doctor Strange movie actually is supposedly going to have some real reveals and some you know game changing stuff that's going to tell a lot about the direction because mm -hmm. uh, it's Scarlet Witch is supposed to appear but it's all supposed to get really dark and you know there's a lot of you know it's very good I guess they're going to go real cosmic with it right very mystical um, it's, I guess they, they kind of described it as Marvel's first horror movie well they're saying they're saying that uh, the Scarlet Witch show and the Loki series I guess are tying into no Scarlet Witch it's Scar well Scarlet Witch and Vision Scar the Scar but I think that one's going to be a little bit more contained self-contained or might might lead us into why she shows up in the Doctor Strange well, movie well, well they're saying that that's going to directly tie into the Doctor Strange the new Doctor Strange movie okay uh, I read that like well, that yesterday. makes sense yeah yeah but I it's the, the main thing is is that I think you know we're not going to really know like the broad direction that they're going in for a, a couple between the series and the movies for maybe a couple more years. Right, right, right. You know, we're just going to be getting hints and teases, but, you know, I don't think we're going to know fully for a little bit. Yeah, uh, I think we could all agree, though, we have lots of... It's. I feel like it's an overload, even, like, just here trying to, like, think of all the stuff to talk about. We, there's so much content. Oh, you could go on and on and on but and on. But it's not even just Marvel. Like, Marvel alone, like, because there's so much stuff besides, like, this, all the Star mm -hmm. Wars stuff, all the anime I watch, just Rick and Morty just yeah. came back. There's so much content. And then, so much the, the, Like, comic books, it's just... It's like, how do you even... Yeah. 
Like it's insane. That's why we just yeah. talk about what we like. Meaning, I'm going to be talking about Rick and Morty pretty soon here. I, I'm not. I'm not current. <laughs> but once I, once I'm current, I'm going to start talking about that. So I think we're like two out, two to three episodes in at the time of shooting this. <laughs> but you got some Star Wars intel for, as far as leaks go. I, I that do. You're excited I, to I talk have about. some Star Wars stuff, and uh, we'll we'll of course I will mention that the Mandalorian series continues to truck on. And that is just continues to be awesome and a lot of fun. I will say this episode four was my least favorite episode, though. You you mentioned that. Yeah. I, I really loved it. Baby Yoda is, <laughs> he, he, it's worth watching the show just <laughs> for Baby Yoda. <laughs> Spoilers. This is a meme already, though, when he's drinking the soup. Oh, just yeah. There, <laughs> just, <laughs> it's, it just continues to be so good and something I look forward to every single week. Uh, but the Star Wars rumors that I'm talking about, they come from, as I've mentioned several times, my wife is, she knows what the leaked endings are. That's so funny. And she's keeping up on all the rumors and she just keeps joy? hinting at things. Why does she want it spoiled for her though? She says she doesn't care. I said, you didn't, ca you don't care. She's like, no, I, I just don't care. So is it fun for her to just like torment you, I guess, with it? She, well, she wants to tell me desperately. Okay. She desperately wants to tell me, but she knows that that would be. Do we know it's for sure? A very real? upsetting. Like a real spoiler. Like is it confirmed that this is like the okay? End? So here's what here's what the the recent these these are heavy serious rumors that are flying all over the place now. So we know that the the rumor the, the end was rumored to have leaked. Yeah, we talked right? about last podcast with the, yep. the and we talked the about did it come from the the script. That J.J. Abrams revealed was, you know, kidnapped. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said the mattress. For people who didn't watch last week's podcast, that, was sound that probably really sounded really weird. strange. Long story short, an actor left the their script under the mattress in a hotel. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so the so we thought maybe you know last time we talked about it that it, maybe the leaked ending came from the the mattress fiasco, the right. mattress saga, <laughs> <laughs> the under the bed leaked script. Mm -hmm. So now the rumors are that are flying all over the place is that the leaked ending mm -hmm. came from Disney doing screenings, private screenings to test. They're doing test screenings of the that. film with audiences and that the first time they did it, the audiences were very unhappy. Okay. And that's where the leaked ending came from. People talked about it despite NDAs, et cetera, et cetera. Naturally. <laughs> now, because the internet, yeah. But now, I guess they've gone back and they reworked some things. And again, this is rumor, but it is heavy. It is heavy rumor mm -hmm. uh, that, that now they've gone back and reworked some things. They did more test screenings and people got up and walked out. So they made it worse is what you're saying. That people are <laughs> still because, and this is the main point, because I guess the thing that the fans, the audiences that are watching it are unhappy about, they just... They they refuse to change. Hmm. There's an aspect to it. Again, I have made sure. Don't tell me anything. I don't want to know. But now it's got all these speculative <laughs> things going through my head of what it could be, what it likely might be. And it's got, I've got, because she's like, now basically what they're staunchly unwilling to change the aspects that people are most unhappy about during the test screenings. Mm -hmm. So they're reworking these other things to see if they can lessen it. But they're not changing the main issue. Well, it's probably because of like that's like how it's going to end. That's right. how it's going to end. You'd be changing because the entire I movie. guess they wanted to. They want it to end on a specific note or a specific point or whatever specific character. A specific character. <laughs> so now it's got me wondering all kinds of things because I got all these thoughts in my head of like. The title is Rise of Skywalker. What if Skywalker? What if everybody who everybody thinks is Palpatine? becomes Skywalker. Skywalk, Luke Skywalker becomes some form of a villain. Or if it's Anakin and not Palpatine. You know, I don't even care. You want to know why? You want to know why? We got the Mandalorian. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what I... But it, my point is, is that, you know, all of that seems nonsensical that I'm throwing out there, but it's got all these thoughts going through my head of like, what is it that they could have done that has people so aggravated? Now, again, this is all rumor. Nothing is official. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all, this is but all. This is Disney. But just these throwing are the fake rumors. Out. Maybe so. <laughs> Maybe so. But I, I don't know why Disney would throw out, you know, rumors that are as negative towards their because film. then Ashton Kutcher comes out <laughs> and we see that we're punked. <laughs> but you know, the point is, is that you know these rumors that are circulating, they're coming from people that are, you know, inside 
they're insiders. You know, they're coming from people that supposedly know what's going on mm -hmm. around the film and these test screenings. And it apparently has not done well in test screenings and that audiences are not thrilled where they leave it. And despite things that they may have changed or tweaked, the thing that people are, have been most unhappy about is being left. So it's just got all kinds of things popping or going around, bouncing around in my head of what it is that they could have done. I'm very anxious to see it now because now I just freaking want to know. Yeah. Because my wife is just sitting in front of me like with this look of like, I want to tell you so bad. <laughs> And you know, and I, it's just like I need to, I need to see this movie before it gets spoiled because my 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 wife is uh, she's she's a walking rumor mill now. Just once December <laughs> hits, I stop reading comments. I'm just like uh, screw it. <laughs> when every time a big movie's around yeah. the corner, I don't. But, even well, do we're it. right around the corner. It's only a couple weeks out, and we've already got our tickets to go and see it and screen it and review it for you guys. But um, yeah, I'm I'm anxious to see it at this point. And I man, I'm just I just I'm really I'm, curious to see where this ends out. I'm totally in the like. I'm not even. I'm not like not. I'm not not excited. I'm just thinking. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm like. You could probably tell. Whatever. Why. I'm just like. Yeah. Whatever. Like again. I got Mandalorian. I got the original trilogy. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. The man. Like I said, the Mandalorian continues <laughs> to be great, and I anticipate this movie is going to have some things that are really cool, and you know, we'll see if how how the how it how they end it out. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. J.J. Abrams did a good job with Force Awakens. That is true. I did enjoy that one. But with that, that brings, that, or that's going to bring this episode of the podcast to a close. Yep. But we want to remind everyone to follow us. You can follow us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, and our variant, the podcast channel. Be sure to subscribe because these uh, these episodes actually go up a day early on yes, that channel. Yes, they go up on, on Mondays channel. on the variant podcast YouTube channel, and then they go up on the variant channel the next day. At least for now, that's going to end in the near future. Yeah, on, on a date that we... Decide yeah. in the future. <laughs> we haven't decided yet. <laughs> but uh, with that said, that's going to bring uh, today's episode to a close. And we'll see you guys next time when we, we talk, talk about, about all things comics. comics.